is the new Audi R8 RWS V10. RWS stands for rear wheel series, which means you can now order your R8 in rear wheel drive. It's available as both a coupe, you see here, and a convertible, and Audi say they'll only ever make 999 of them. Prices start at about £110,000, which makes this the cheapest Audi R8 you can buy. Now think about that for a second. Can you imagine Porsche releasing a limited series car that's lighter and more driver focused and then charging less money for it? Mauro, that's all well and good, but come on, is that car as good as a 911 GT3? Let's go for a drive and find out. Try and keep up. Why am I so happy to be sitting in a rear wheel drive Audi R8 on this damp, cold day? Well, to start with, it's 50 kilograms lighter than the four wheel drive car because it doesn't have the front drive shafts, it doesn't have the prop shaft, and it doesn't have the center diff. Performance is pretty much unaffected, 0 to 60, 3.7 seconds. Top speed, still 198 miles an hour. And all of a sudden, some magic's been injected back into this car. Now, while the Italian stallion tells you all about that R8 RWS, it's my job to tell you about this 911 GT3. Except you've probably heard about this car a thousand times already. You know all about the performance, you know all about how brilliant the steering is, how good the handling is, you know all about the engine and all about the amazing soundtrack. Although, let's just have a quick refresher. Oh, 9,000 RPM. Yeah, it's a spectacular engine. But I want to tell you something about this car that maybe you haven't heard before. I want to talk about the damping. Okay, you've probably heard that the damping is spectacular in this car. But I want to describe it in a bit more detail because for me, more than the engine in these GT Porsches, more than the performance, more than the steering or anything else, it's the quality of the damping that really makes these cars stand out. Basically, when Audi launched the first R8 back in 2007, they sent absolute shockwaves through the supercar elite. Out of nowhere, there was a four-wheel drive, mid-engine car from the might of Audi, and it was absolutely fantastic. A couple of years later, they facelifted the car, and somehow they toned it down a bit. It lost some of that original car's magic. Now, I'm happy to report that magic is mostly back. The really important question is, can you actually tell this car is now rear-wheel drive? Well, yes, you absolutely can, unless you're just sort of pootling in traffic when, you know, you probably couldn't tell the other one was four-wheel drive you can immediately tell that this is rear wheel drive. There's now a balance to the car that you didn't have in the four wheel drive car. It's 50 kilograms lighter, and that 50 kilograms is immediately felt. The car changes direction much more keenly. There's a lightness to the steering that wasn't there before. You might not have driven a 911 GT3 before, but if you've ever slammed shut a soft close kitchen cupboard door, you know what the damping feels like. You know what that's like when you slam that cupboard door and you expect it to crash loudly. But it doesn't, it shuts quickly and sharply, but softly. We've got lots of spring rate, there's not much wheel travel. So you expect it to crash like that cupboard door, but it never does. It absorbs all of the impact, it absorbs the shape of the road, but it does so brilliantly, so it never runs out of travel and skips. It never scrapes its belly into the tarmac and it feels beautifully controlled. It really is an amazing sensation and you just don't really feel it in many other cars. It's so rare. It really is an incredible achievement. All of a sudden, there's a delicacy back into the chassis of this car. Pick up the power too quickly and the back will step out. <laughs> It moves around a lot as well, it's really, really exciting. It's damp here, and that was full throttle there. ESP, completely dealing with the situation. Dynamically, it's absolutely fantastic. Brakes, fantastic. Love the sound of that engine. V10, 5.2 litres. <laughs> I love the noise this thing makes. The only thing that's slightly left is because it now hasn't got those front drive shafts, putting some sort of momentum into the front wheels. 
Some of the steering feel has gone from the Mark II car. And then, as you know, the rest of the car is basically just as good. It's E-Pass, but the steering is beautifully weighted, so precise, really sharp. It's even got feedback. The gearbox is sensationally quick. The engine, ugh, yeah, we know that this engine is out of this world. He thinks it's maybe a bit too noisy. I think he's being a bit soft. How can you have any issues with that? You can just sense the front understeering at the limit on these damp, in these damp conditions. Gearbox works absolutely fantastically. Not convinced by the actual paddles themselves. They feel that they could do with uh, just something a bit more substantial. They're just these kind of poor excuses. They're plastic, whereas in Dan's GT3, he's got some quite nice aluminium oversized paddles. I, th I think this car could do with some of those. Everything else in this cabin is absolutely spot on. It feels absolutely beautiful. Dan's in the GT3, but this is a nicer place to spend time. The ride is absolutely fantastic. It rides nicer than Dan's GT3. It might not be quite as aggressive, but come on, this is definitely the better compromise. Grip, body control, agility, precision, just everything about this car is next level. All of which means I do not envy any other manufacturer who tries to get involved in this sector of the market, this 110,000 pound, 500 horsepower sports car market, because how do you compete with one of these cars? And you know what? To be fair to it, to be fair to Audi, it's not really trying to be a 911 GT3, is it? It's not as hardcore, it's not as single-minded, it's not as focused as a 911 GT3. You can tell that by looking at the tyres that it's on and look at the tyres that this GT3 is on. These are Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. They're running P0, so it's not on the silly sports tyres that Dan's got. I think Dan's probably got some Cup 2s on his car and it'll be understeering everywhere. All of a sudden, I've got an adjustability back into this car that I didn't have in the four-wheel drive car. The lack of front drive shafts, the lack of prop shaft, and a lack of sensor diff means that this car now does everything I want it to do. I no longer have to second guess what the four-wheel drive system is going to do if the car starts to sense a lack of grip. All of my inputs go to the steering through my hands and to the rear wheels through my feet. There is still something about that R8, isn't there? Its engine is, even in comparison to this, 911 GT3's engine, its motor is spectacular. The gearbox is incredible. It looks great, it's got a good cabin. And then you've got all the theater and all the drama of a mid-engine car with a V10. Probably the most likable R8 they've ever done, all things considered. And yet, it's still no 911 GT3. And you have brought a track day special to a road test. Fair enough. And do you know, we're about three or four miles where we are now from Goodwood Circuit. Yep. And I think if we were out on track today in these two cars, yep. I think there'd be an ocean between them. I think this GT3 would walk it. Dan, if I had longer legs, I'd be taller. We are not <laughs> on track. We are on a road. And that is why this today is the winner of this test. It's not on silly tires. It's on P zeros, admittedly bespoke to this car. It's slightly softer, so it hasn't been affected by the cold weather and the damp. I think this is the better car today on these roads. I think that R8 is a wonderful car, actually. It's, best, it's my favourite R8. The best Audi R8 I've ever made, yeah. correct. To be fair to Audi, they're not trying to build no. the car as focused as the yep. GT3, Good but point. The, yeah. the, the payoff is that it's just not quite the raw, involving, exciting driving experience that you get from this car. What are you taking? I'm going to stick with the, the hardcore one. I'm staying okay. in the GT3. Do you not feel slightly short-changed by your six-cylinder engine compared to my, my massive V10? Okay, I'm looking at something just here. It says nine. What's your red line? Uh, eight and a half. And 9,000 is more, therefore yeah. it's a better engine. I, I do, I, do you know what, I've said it before, I actually think that engine sounds a bit harsh over that last 1,000 RPM. I almost think it's there just for the sake of it being there. I kind of get what you're saying, but I think overall it's it's a mighty engine. Okay. It's got a rawness and an edge to it. that I, I love that V10, but it doesn't feel as serrated, as sharp yeah, as Yeah, you one. know, you're right. That is a sharper car all over. But I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to say that on this damp 
day to day, I think this is the better car because we're not at Goodwood. We're close, but we're not there. And I actually think today on this road, this is a nice car. Can I just say, blue doesn't suit you. Okay. <laughs> my mum always said blue, my blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs>